Hello everybody, Isabella from Prior Time here and today we are having another of the Making in a Day video. I haven't made them for quite some time, um, at least a year I think, mostly because we moved house. Um, so that's going to be the first one in the new workshop. And, and speaking of workshop, I'm currently filming from my office because my workshop is getting warm. Um, let me just show you a little bit. Um, yep, yeah, that's it under a thin layer of snow. So I'm just waiting for a heater to do its job and make it sort of workable. Um, now what I'm going to be doing today is a little bit different. Makeshift solutions. Um, now I've been working a lot for menswear for the last couple of weeks um, for my husband mostly because he needs something warm um, to, for our event in Lithuania in a couple of weeks. Um, and I've done everything ready for all the fittings and unexpectedly he's away for a day so I'll have some free time one day. Borrowed time really, not free time. But um, we'll see. And I was just looking yesterday for, you know, through my fabrics and my stash what I can make for myself. Um, maybe a, a coat or a mantle to be a little bit warmer. And I've come across something I bought ages ago. It's this. Doesn't it look familiar? <sighs> I bought it in a sort of um, bargain old stock website, I think. Um, because it looked familiar. And it's it's... It was quite a cheap fabric, actually, like it's about 10 quid per metre. And I've got just enough for, for a dress. And I thought it's it's silk deep only with a printed cowl parsley. And that made me think of something else. Let me just check my magic book. If I can, I'd like to make a cheap version. Oh, this the velvet even coat well obviously I mean this is a spectacular item um, it's not very complex structurally it's it's a loose coat um, but it has amazing embroidery and the fabric is superb so obviously that's not what mine is going to be and um, it would be lovely to see it recreate it um, it would take a little bit of time but tempt it <laughs> Because the embroiderer, we're not an embroideress, but the embroiderer here is, is pretty straightforward, it's mostly Cushing. Um, but for that, I'll have more time, and unfortunately, I have a business to run. And for me, the priority is bespoke orders, um, stuff I make for the shop so that I can pay my bills and feed the cat and stuff like that. Um, then, stuff I make for my books. And at the very bottom is stuff I make for myself, and that also has some priorities. Um, so it's very rarely that I actually have some time to do something for myself that I'm not be selling on or, or using for something else. So, yep, yeah, one day is all I have. So obviously it's not going to be a direct recreation, it's going to be something much cheaper, much faster to make. Um, and yes, possibly a little bit lighter, I will interline it, but it might actually serve as a as a tea gown, as well as a, as a coat, or coat for summer months, not winter ones. Uh, but I'll, I'll see if I can take it to, to the Lithuania as well, for sitting over my evening gown, if it's, if it's a bit nippy, uh, wherever we are. <laughs> so it's, um, well, we'll see how it goes. Um, um, I have found, because the problem was, you have very useful diagrams in the V&A book, but you didn't, see, you didn't see the front. I remember seeing the gown ages back when I was visiting V&A several times, and I found a Google image of the front. Ta-da! So it gives me a little bit more. Um, interestingly enough, the embroidery really sort of helps to see the cuts. Obviously, when you are working with velvet and you have usually quite narrow panels, you may have to do some some piecing and I think from what I've seen what I saw ages back that there is some piecing on a side piece if that makes sense um, that's something I won't have to do here um, but I've got other challenges here you make everything in velvet and although the direction of the um, of the 
of the fabric is important, you can cover seams and stuff oops, um, with your embroidery. Um, here I'll, I'll just will have to make sure that the pieces are aligned correctly to make the pattern would not match exactly because it's it's not a really symmetrical pattern but so that it flows in a natural way and I will need to find um, a nice fabric for the inserts. Original has a layer of lace over some satin I think. Hello cat. Hello Mandy. And um, so I'll see if I can do something like that if I have matching colours or if not any other fabric will do. And I think Merlin approves. Hello? He approves, obviously. I'm just going to put it here. So it's just something to do something, you know, nice and easy and simple and possible to do in a day, hopefully. So, um,. I'm going to draft a little pattern. It's it's not too complex. I've made similar things before, so I will probably use um, some of my um, bodice blocks and just adapt it from there. Um, but um, not direct replica. Something you can do in a day, hopefully. Fingers crossed. So yeah, I think once the workshop has warmed up a little bit. <laughs> I'll put my warmer clothes and a hat and then go and start cutting out and planning. So I'll see you from there. Um, this is not the instruction video, obviously, so it will be lots of um, time lapses and I will sort of um, stop and say what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And hopefully by the end of the day, I will have a coat. See you in the workshop. Right, time in the workshop. It's cold, but Okay, the heater is still on. Uh, and I'm going to start drafting the pattern. I sort of, more or less, that, that's the pattern I'm working from, basically. I'm not mathematically inclined person. I just freehand most things. So all I need is a diagram like these, showing some possibilities, then making them up um, in a mock-up based on one of my patterns over there that I know sort of fit. Um, and then seeing and improving the mock-ups, so sometimes it makes several mock-ups, sometimes it takes one, um, really depends, but at least something you can't really count for in maps is the difference of the sides, so if lots of people nowadays have one shoulder lower than the other one, that will sort of show quite a lot if you're working with a mock-up, um, but not necessarily in a, in a mathematical diagram. Um, the still mathematical diagram have other advantages which I don't have and I have to do more mock-ups but there's always a, um, a balancing line um, so if maths works for you fantastic I don't have that skill and it's not really that necessary um, anyway I've got my my pattern I need to have a look closer what sort of fabrics I will use for the um, inserts I've got the calico I'll be using one of these, this is 85 bodice, um, sleeve will actually be pretty, I've got a better pattern than the sleeve actually, so I might use a later pattern uh, with darts, because I think there's some darts involved there as well, it doesn't look like it's only the gathering, and I have a four piece generic Victorian bodice, which I'm going to utilise and just use it as a base to drop out the lines. So, yeah, let's do it. It's about half past ten in the morning, so not an early morning. It's winter, so I don't get up early in winters. And um, let's see how we get on. I have cut out the mock-up and I'm going to stitch it all up. I didn't do the sleeves because I've done these sleeves before so many times that it's not really needed. Um, and I will drop the collar once I have the coat on and I see if the neckline works. 
Um, I've also found a couple of fabrics um, that would work for the inset. Um, I did have some nice lace and satin to create the more textured look, but the lace was just not right. Um, it's lovely, but just too bright, too contrasting with the main fabric, so that will distract. So I thought I'd go for the leftover of that. And this is a very expensive fabric, but I just have a small leftover. And that actually works pretty well with this. And I'll probably pair it with a little bit of a braid along the edges. Um, to emphasize it. So that's my braids and that satin will be for the lining. Now normally the pieces in most Victorian stuff would be flat lined for a variety of reasons. Um, for the bodices um, and for the skirts. The main reason is you have a very easy access to the seams so you can bone them easily, you can remove the bone and you can Restitch the seam so you can make it a little bit larger, but a bit smaller, so you can really sort of fine tune the fit on bot bodices or main bodices because we all change shape during our life. So that was one of the main reasons why the um, flat lining was done easy access. Now, for a coat, it's not such a big issue, mostly because, well, it's, it's a loose garment. So you can adjust the sizing if necessary, um, probably would, because you know if it's an expensive item you're making, you don't really want to let go of it if your size changes a little bit. Um, so you would adjust the sizing for smaller, bigger, whichever you need. But then it's just not that often. Um, at the same time, um, lining inserted separately will cover all the seams, will cover all the mess inside and if the code flares open it doesn't show any sleeves. So I think I'll go for that version, uh, not, not sleeves, seams. So I think I'll go for that version. So um, yeah, let's stitch the mock-up first, see how it fits and take it from there. is ready and it's not too bad actually. I just marked random darts but the straight front definitely works. Obviously I'm not wearing a corset at the moment but I still have some space here if I do because then we'll be just higher up. I think the only thing I will change is make this inset panel a little bit thinner but it floats nicely. need to adjust the length a little bit. I'll see how long a train I want. Um, the sides are a little bit too long but the loose fit is quite nice and comfortable. The arm side a little bit in. I sort of need to plan because if I need to sell it at some point it would be nice if it fitted a variety of sizes <laughs> as a loose coat should. So I'm going to put some nodes on the mock-up now and cut it all out in the fabrics. And I will use this mock-up as interlining for, for the silk because it's a little bit, well it's not flimsy but it's deep lining so you know what I mean. It's not, it doesn't have the weight that will make it hang nicely. So this will go as an interlining so it won't be wasted. I might make, take some measurements off it just in case I fancy putting it in one of my books. It's not a bad design. Mm. It's just a loose gown. Obviously it will look much better if I have contrasting colours, so 
um, let's be about it. Mm. Right, the body of the gown is all cut out in the fabric, which is just enough and I managed to sort of manipulate the pattern a little bit so that it sort of looks okay. Um, and um, I've cut out the lining as well. I thought I would have not enough fabric that I thought would be good to lining, which is the satin, but it managed to be just enough for the body uh, with some piecing. But hey, it's a historical technique. It will just take a little bit more time, nothing more than that. And it will not really show because it's on the side and upper back bits, so not the problem. Um, not enough for the sleeves though, but again, not the huge problem because sleeves do not show, sleeve lining doesn't show at all. So I can make it in whatever I want really, which is, which is a good, good, good point here. So I'm going to stitch all the layers together and then start on the sleeves after that. It's lunch time by the way. I'm going to go for lunch first. So right, I need to flatten the seams and uh, border the inserts in some nice braid and then I can start thinking about drafting the collar, putting the sleeves and then doing the lining. There's quite a lot of volume. I'm quite pleased with it. Sort of very medieval apart from the pattern. <laughs>
it's three o'clock, so a few hours later, and I have now done my collar. I've done some similar ones before, I think, for my first book, so I sort of more or less knew how to achieve the effect I was after, which is the sort of flared evil queen collar, and it sort of flares up nicely at the back. Um, this can be additionally reinforced with um, boning channels but I've been using this um, really good canvas I'm going to and that's basically standing on its own so I think it will do no need for boning um, if I ever need to I can always add later um, or use some little wires that will help as well but that's my Evil Queen column. Right, next um, I will attach this one and I will start working on the sleeves and then put all of it together. I'll have a couple first. It's four o'clock and the sleeps are ready. Um, unfortunately, my phone has run out of battery when I was filming the process, but there's not much to show. The sleeves are interlined and the little inset is done as well. Mm -hmm. So that is done. So I'm going to put the lining in now into the sleeves and then work this, this one. And they work on the what's the name darts at the top and the gathering. So it's all going to be in one bit, I think. I might assemble these first because then I can backline the cuffs. It'll take some time. So that's the next bit to do is the finish up the sleeves and then set in the lining make the lining up and set it into the gown and we're done so I think in an hour and a half I think I might need to say something about marking the seams and um, pinning stuff. I don't usually pin unless it's, unless it's really, really necessary. I hardly ever mark the seams, again, unless the precision is required. But most of the time, if it's just simple seam, all I'm using is the marking on the machine. So the foot here has a marking of seam allowance and basically you align the edge of your fabric with those lines and off you go. Um, now this is not something that I learned straight away. I mean, I've been sewing huge amount of clothing for the last 30 years, so it comes with practice. And I still will mark it if I really need to be very, very precise. Um, sleeves on the lining, not really a lot of precision is, is necessary. 
Um, so that's that will do. But again, no judgment either way. If you need to mark every single bit and pin every single bit, you work. You do what works for you. Um, I suppose once you start getting more experience, um, you realise that some things are needed always, and some things can be skipped. Not exactly cheating, but you know, you know what I mean. Right, I'm going to iron all of these and assemble the sleeves and see if I can fit them in. It's almost six o'clock and I'm almost done really. Um, the lining is all in. I will do the lining um, for the collab later on in the evening with the because that's hand stitching job, so that's something I do in front of the telly in the evening to relax. So the last thing for today I'm going to do is just set in the sleeves and we'll be done. That's the sleeves. That should take about half an hour, and then to finish later on. I'm not sure how to close it. Probably hooks and eyes. Not sure if it has a closure. And how lovely that it's sort of lined up here. And the sleeves are in. And the coat is done, apart from the collar, which is the evening's job. I'll take it to the event and take some nice photos of it. I love the introvert colours. <laughs> Just a quick follow-up, um, a few weeks after making the gown and photographing it and actually selling it already. Um, when I posted the photos, um, lots of people commented, um, making me aware that there's another costumer who um, was inspired by the same fashion plate and people had questions. Um, so to just answer those questions very quickly here. Um, one, no, I don't follow Kathy Hay, so I was not in the know. Uh, secondly, Mine is an inspired item, it's not a direct replica of what Kathy is going for. Um, it's 
completely different. <laughs> it's just a very different thing whatsoever. I'm just to make a complete replica. I would need at least a month day in day out of embroidery and then another couple of days to finish it. Not one day, obviously. Um, and the price tag would be very much different too. Um, so they're two different things. And good luck to her, my goodness. A lot of um, work to do. Um, and thirdly, there's only a limited amount of um, extant garments that um, people can be inspired by and that's absolutely okay that's very historical in a way um, in the past where people had um, magazines and fashion plates a fashion plate there was to either completely imitate it and make everything as it was shown or be inspired by it and take some elements from it and make, maybe replicate in different fabrics or with a different trim or with a skirt from another um, fashion plate um, so that's one thing um, and I think it's actually quite um, interesting and fascinating even to see that one fashion plate or one excellent garment can inspire several people and very often um, although you can tell that the garment was inspired by one piece the garments were in inspired by one piece there are lots of different solutions and I think it's very educational to see how people tackle the challenge and what different solutions they come up with especially when you can see only for example the back of a fashion plate and not the front um, or one side and not the other so um, it happened to me before uh, it happened to all of us before we've made the same gown um, sometimes um, more than once <laughs> I'll put some uh, photos here from the previous occasions so um, Come on guys, it's it's normal, it's historically appropriate and yeah, you make your stuff and don't be discouraged that another person has been inspired by this fashion plate or by this garment, it's fine. You are making it your own, um, you want to change it or you want to keep it, it's still your own garment. Yes, not designed by you, especially unless you change it a lot, but that's about it. Um, so yeah. That's it. I do hope you've enjoyed the, the whole presentation um, and the one in a day madness. Um, the gown served me once in one evening in, in Lithuania for an event and it's now sold off. But I thought it was a very educational experience and it's actually good to raise a couple of those issues as well in public. Just people very often don't realise that, yeah, you are not the only person making this particular gown. Or there will be other people who either have made it or are making it or will make it and it's fine see you later